Okay, can you check and see if it's live? Um, I don't see the actual actual event. Because it says there's no upcoming events. I don't know if it's actually live or not. If you want to check really quick. We might be live right now. So I know Ross created it. Yeah, I, I will do that. I think I'm going to skip page if you want to double check. But just be aware, you might be live right now. Like, I am live. If we are live, I see you too. Got it? Yeah, you're live. Cool. Yeah, cool. Stuff. Thank you, Mark. I'm just trying to break everything. Cool. Hello, YouTubes. Can I play with your M&P? Sweet. Okay. How's it going, everybody? Uh, today is April 5th, I believe. Sorry, April 6th. May. Well, I'm way off today. <laughs> it is May 6th. Uh, well, welcome to the uh, early start of the live show. The actual live show will be starting like normal at 4.30. Um, but what I've been doing lately for the past few weeks is... Going on about 15, 20 minutes early because a lot of you guys have questions and shout outs. Um, so that's gonna, what I'm going to be doing right now for the next 20 minutes or so. Um, so if you guys want to ask me any questions or if you guys want shout outs, add me to my Airsoft GI Space Dan Facebook page. That is my work Facebook page and I'm on there all the time. And then uh, I will usually make a post about a couple hours before the live show begins asking what questions you guys have or what concerns or what shout outs you guys want to have. So I got a list of, um, at first it was one page, then it started to be two page, and now we're on three pages. So this is getting bigger and bigger, which is why I'm on a little bit sooner. So uh, hopefully I am live and all of you guys can see me. Let me refresh this comments really quick just to make sure. Uh, okay, cool. It looks pretty good. Okay, first of all, shout outs. Um, shout outs are kind of fun because it really seems like you guys are everywhere and I mean that worldwide so the first shout out is to Zach Ellis who is uh, hopefully watching me from Germany so greetings from the US um, here's another shout out for CS underscore Spartans underscore airsoft um, they have an Instagram page that they post up a lot of cool airsoft photos I'm assuming so check them out um, here's uh, another shout out from SOG it's a airsoft team out in Tennessee also another team task force 941 in Florida Here's another team that I actually like the name a lot. This is pretty ridiculous. Uh, the team is Super Awesome Galactic Unicorns. Definitely very badass. Uh, so shout out to you guys for sure. Another team, uh, Team Spartan 6 from North Carolina. And then some individuals. We have Nate Cook. Shout out approved. Uh, Airsoft Sea Raiders. That's kind of a cool name for an Airsoft team. So shout out to you guys. Um, another shout out to uh, Film Studio Merck Work. Merck Wood Studios. That's a tongue twister. Shout out to you guys. Uh, this is actually a pretty creative team name. Delta Airsoft Recon Team or DART. I like that. Very creative. Um, check them out on their YouTube channel which is the official DART. And also a big shout out to Andrew Mason. He is 18 today or hopefully around this time. So happy birthday, um, 18. You can now officially buy airsoft guns on your own. So go nuts. When I turned 18, I bought so many airsoft guns on my own. It was ridiculous. So happy birthday. I hope you have a great day. Um, and the last shout out is going to 784 Cans of Calm and Warhammer from Ontario, Canada. So greetings from the U.S. once again. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm looking at some of the comments and it says uh, some of you guys, somebody's from Brazil. Looks like you guys are kind of all over the place. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. And so we'll uh, answer some questions. Um, uh, Daniel, when you have a second, can you just pop it over to Jason's desk? You want me to over at Jason's desk? Yeah, just real quick. Yeah, sure. I'll um, stay here for a second. If you want, you can jump into some of these questions if you'd like. No, I think I'll just berate our viewers. Oh, that, that sounds great. I'll, yeah. I'll be right back. Hey, everybody. What's going on? All right. Ooh, shout-outs. Uh, the Florida Airsoft Group, shout-out approved. 
Okay, let me just look at the comments. Got a lot of piece of paper on the desk. Let's see here. Yes, we are live. Airsoft SCCS. <laughs> how, how often do you guys go to an airsoft field? Uh, generally, um, we go to an airsoft field once a week. Um, sometimes when I'm busy, I go once every two or three weeks. Uh, but it is tough with uh, both family obligations as well as work obligations. But I'm getting a lot more airsoft action this month. And I'm going to be going out to the East Coast around May 16th to prepare for Operation Reclamation 3, which is on May 18th, which is going to be dope. I'm from Brazil. Well, hello, Tony Hermison from Brazil. Good to have you here. Hope everyone is having a really good Tuesday. It's been quite an interesting week so far. Let's see. Shout out for Team BBSP. BBSP, shout out. Approved. All righty, let's take a look at more of these comments. Daniel, who's not here, you guys need more AKs on the wall behind you. I totally agree. I, I, I definitely do like AKs. We've got a preponderance of M4s. Um, yeah, right? Yeah. Makes you want to hurt someone, doesn't it? Yeah, all right. Anyway, there's just some internal work dialogue going on here. Um, <laughs> a lot of interesting questions. Um, if you read this out loud, you win. All right. What, what do we win? It's heart. We get your heart? Yes. Like Indiana Jones, Kalima. I'll expect Kalima. that in a cooler. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to stop outside real quick, grab some uh, beverage. Sounds good. Uh, is there anything from the front? Uh, I think I'm good. Uh, but I'm going to try to fly through these questions really quick so we can start on time. Go to. All right. Apologies for that, guys. Uh, sometimes things get a little crazy here in the office, so I apologize for getting taken away or starting late. Uh, but I got a bunch of questions uh, from you guys. So I'm going to try to run through them as quickly as I can so we don't start too late when Bob gets back. So uh, question number one is from Ben. Uh, what gun would you like to have in Airsoft and why? Personally, right now, um, I kind of want to have a BFC PDW because it's really small and lightweight. Um, I have never had a PDW before, and I like the fact that it is M4 compatible, so that's probably one of the guns I'm looking at. The other gun would be either a Polar Star, because I've never had a Polar Star, or the new Tipman M4s that are coming out. Those look pretty cool. Um, oh, uh, here's another question is, do you have a gun that you think another supplier should make? Um, there's a lot of guns that, you know, most suppliers make. Can't think of anything off the top of my head that, you know, would be a good gun that nobody makes right now. I would like to see more, like, sci-fi guns. Uh, I'm, I'm a big nerd, you know, like Halo and, you know, Star Wars, Star Trek and all that stuff, too. So, like, I'd love to see a, a, a mass-produced, like, Halo battle rifle. Like, I think that would sell. Like, it's ridiculous. I don't think a lot of people would play with it, but I think that'd be really cool. Um... Get another question uh, asking, uh, what are my thoughts on ATAX versus Multicam? They're both good camos. Uh, right now, I am running uh, Multicam. Uh, I don't know which one's more effective. I haven't done enough research on it. Um, personally, I'd probably go with Multicam. Um, seems to be more of the uh, hip cool uh, camouflage at the moment. But ATAX is also really cool. I specifically like the foliage green ATAX, uh, especially because Star Wars uh, it was on Endor, or it looked like the same camouflage. Uh, AJ Jackson is asking, what is my favorite CQB gun? Um, I built this custom CQB a little, uh, a custom CQB M4 a while ago, and the setup was pretty basic, but it was a Noveski 10.5 inch rail system with a 10.5 inch barrel and a KX3 at the end, and then a 416 stock. And I really liked it because it was very, very solid, um, but it was easy to maneuver. So that was probably my favorite CQB gun. If not, another one I like is the Magpul PDR. That's definitely a great gun. Uh, Clayton Abram is asking for attack uh, for assault on Antioch, does my plate carrier need to match my BDU requirement? I have the peop the proper BDU dress attire, just the plate carrier is black. Can I still attend? Uh, absolutely. Um, if you guys are not familiar, we're going to be talking about this event uh, a little bit later. This is for uh, assault on Antioch. This is an event coming up in the next few months that's going to be at GamePod in Northern California. So I'm going to be there. Bob's going to be there. We have a couple uh, personalities going to be there as well. It is going to be a limited player game. It's going to be a two-day event as well, Friday and Saturday. Um, so check that out on our website. I'll go into more details about that later on, but that's going to be a very, very fun event. If you're interested in going, buy your tickets sooner than later. Uh, George Tran is asking, what is your favorite sniper? 
Uh, my favorite sniper of all time, despite like my crazy DMR setup and like some of my crazy custom guns, is a very basic UTG M324 sniper rifle. Now this is a spring action sniper rifle that is I think like a hundred dollars or so, but I've liked this gun for so long and so much that I've actually bought three of them mainly because the first two I used to use so much and you know just with the bolt and wear and tear and stuff like that um, that they'd break and I just buy a new one. Um, I don't know what it was but I think it was the second one that I bought for some reason is the best way I can describe it is if you guys know the term of like a lemon where like you just get a bad version this is like the opposite of a lemon for some reason this thing was like crazy accurate and I would just snipe people for days and I had so much fun with it uh, I have a lot of good memories and some funny stories with it as well too so that's probably my favorite sniper rifle of, of all time um, not the most effective uh, or the most accurate or the farthest shooting but my my personal favorite uh, next question is from Tommy. How do you afford airsoft and everyday things? How do you keep up with buying good guns and still paying for food and stuff? Um, that's going to come down to just you know money management like any other hobby or anything else. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to buy food and pay rent and all that stuff first. Um, but when it comes to airsoft, airsoft is unfortunately a more expensive hobby. Um, so it depends on you know what you want to buy. There's a lot of affordable options out there. But granted, a lot of the better options and more uh, better performing guns and and, you know, plate carriers and tactical gear is more expensive. I've always had the mindset of if I want to get a plate carrier or if I want to get a gun, I'd rather save up my money for months and months and months and months, which I did and still do, until I get what I really want. Because I know in the end I'll be much happier with that. So patience, I would say, is definitely one of the big things, in my opinion, of making airsoft a fun hobby. Um, also, if you want to just get like a basic gun and you know some extra mags and a face mask, airsoft is only as expensive as you make it. Yeah, guys run out there with you know thousands of dollars of gear and kit and thousand dollar guns and stuff like that. But if you want to go out there and just play, you can get into the game for like two hundred dollars or less. And then all you have to do is pay for BBs and charger batteries at home and then entry for the games. So it's actually not a very expensive hobby if you don't want to take it that route. The problem is it's too much fun to not do that and so you know I get guns and I get gear and I get all that other stuff so patience I would say is um, a, a good way to go about it. Uh, Pearson's asking Speedsoft what do you think of it? Uh, Speedsoft is a term if you guys aren't familiar that is kind of known as like the really quick CQB almost like the paintball style um, uh, of play. Uh, I like Speedsoft. Um, I don't know if that's like an official term yet, but I think it's well known within the airsoft world. My origins in airsoft came from CQB fields, really close uh, engagements of seriously 10 feet or less with guns that are shooting 30 BBs a second before Polar Stars even existed. Uh, so that was something that I was, I got used to and I loved. And so I liked that. I started in that environment because in my personal opinion, I feel like that is the most intense uh, environment for an airsoft game when somebody's 10 feet away and he's shooting 30 BBs a second at you, you have to be on your toes and you have to be super quick and you have no room for error. You have to be super tucked in and all that stuff. And so I take that mindset to every airsoft game that I play and I feel that it's made me a better player. So I like Speedsoft a lot. It is very intense. I know a lot of people don't like it as much. Um, I've been doing it for so long that lately I've been tailoring out towards some of the more bigger games and like more semi-auto stuff is that I'm, I've been really enjoying recently, but Speedsoft, definitely, definitely enjoy. Okay, what do we got next? Uh, Chris is asking what is going to happen after Reclamation 3. Um, after 3 usually comes 4, so there will probably be a Reclamation 4. Um, I don't know why, but there's some rumor going around saying that this was going to be the last Operation Reclamation. Nope, it's not. Um, so I'll say that out loud publicly for you guys. Uh, Reclamation, is the series, is going to continue. Um, we're going to have to see who wins uh, this next game. Obviously, the U.S. is going to win. I hope you're watching this, Ed. Ed is the commander on the British side, so we're going to take him down this time. Uh, but that's going to be really fun. So there will be an Operation Reclamation for it in the future. Uh, Daniel Lamb is asking, what is my favorite low-profile plate carrier? What would you recommend? Uh, right now, I would say uh, like a Lancer JPC uh, or the real Cry JPC. That's a really great low-profile plate carrier. Or the Banshee. Banshee is really nice as well. 
Uh, James is asking, what is the best lube to use on a gas blowback pistol? Um, that is going to be dependent on which pistol you have. A lot of them you can use just normal silicon oil, but for example, KWAs, you have to use the KWA specific oil. Um, that's why they actually give it to you with all of their gas blowback guns. It's very important. What can happen is if you use the wrong kind of oil or normal silicon oil, it can swell up the hop-up rubber um, or the, um, the hop-up bucking, and when it swells that, the backspin is not applied correctly to the BB, and your accuracy just goes to crap. Um, so I would say look at the manual and do some research and find out what gun you have and what oil is going to work the best. Uh, Lucian, uh, Lucian. Thanks for watching once again. You are a very loyal fan. Every single live show, I see a question from you. I hope you can make it out to uh, OpRec 3. We're going to be out there, so hopefully we get a chance to play with the Lucian. Um, question from him is saying, if you had to choose between the Mad Bull Nimbeski NSR Rail and the Troy TRX Battle Rail, ro um, battle rail uh, what are those to use for the rest of your life? Which one would you choose? I'd choose the Mad Bull Nimbeski NSR because that's what's on my my M4 right now, personally, and so I like that one a lot. I mainly like it because it's a lot lighter than the TRX. Uh, not a lot, a little bit lighter, um, but they're both modular rail systems, so they're both pretty cool. Um, I'll answer a quick question from the comments. Somebody's asking GoPros or Contour. I would say Contours. Uh, okay, so Nate Cook is asking, so I just got a Polar Star. What are some of your suggestions slash upgrades you would recommend? I've heard that Polar Stars work amazing with an Orga Barrel Arhat. Uh, an Orga Barrel is a wide bore barrel that has a 6.26 inner diameter. And what that allows it to do is, if you do that in like a normal AEG, you do lose a lot of velocity and a lot of FPS, which is no good. With the Polar Star, because you have control over the amount of airflow, you can bump up the airflow and then the BB will essentially float in the middle of the barrel on a cushion of air. And it creates a lot of uh, accuracy and consistency match that with a tech that can do a good job with an R hop and I've heard that works amazingly well. Um, I've also seen it personally, our techs have done that exact setup. Polar Star, R hop, Orga Barrel on our custom sniper rifle and that thing is amazing. Amazing. Uh, Bob is here so he's going to join us for the last few questions we have. Anthony is asking, in a zombie apocalypse and airsoft guns could kill, what will your three main guns be? I think he's asking what would my three main guns be in a zombie apocalypse and a pistol. Um, I would probably go with like a 22. Three main guns and a pistol? Yeah, that's a lot of guns. I don't know if I carry that many guns. Um, in a zombie apocalypse, my first weapon of choice would be some kind of melee weapon that does not run out of ammo. Uh, just because the amount of zombies that may be out there, you know, your gun jams or uh, you run out of ammo, you know, I want to have some kind of like melee weapon to back me up. So I'd probably go with like a 22 and then... Maybe just like a, a nine mil would be pretty good. I was gonna say don't. I wouldn't think any melee weapons run out of ammo. No, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. oh did I say that you ran out of ammo? Well, you're like I like a melee weapon that does run out of ammo. So it, it oh, makes because sense. it yeah. would not run out of ammo. I think is what I was trying mm -hmm. to say. Uh, okay, Connor is asking. I'm looking for a high speed setup on my SR7, and I want to know what gear ratio I should get since my gun is shooting close to 400. Uh, 400 and two fives. If you want uh, a gear ratio, like a basic high speed gear ratio, is like an 18 to 1 gear set. Uh, you can go like with a really super high speed, which is 13 to 1, but that's crazy, crazy fast. Um, I'd say go with like an 18 to 1 um, and make sure you got a decent motor behind it. Make sure everything is shimmed very, very, very well. AOE has to be corrected and maybe even upgrade the piston because that's a pretty strong setup. Sorry, Bob, say something. I'm giving up on you. Oh, come on, YGO Life. Um, Why don't you take the next one? Yes, yeah, so where'd you get all these questions? So I post them up on uh, my Facebook page because I know people have questions, and then I just copy and paste them on here, and then just try to answer them for everybody. Okay. Um, I actually want to answer the zombie one real quick, if you didn't Yeah, go for it. Uh, three guns. So two main guns and a pistol. I would probably choose that uh, uh, tactical uh, 22 because uh, you can carry a lot of nice. ammo. Um, carry a lot of ammo, and it's still pretty accurate. Uh, I, then I'd probably go with uh, an 870 shotgun, just because those are good uh, all-or-nothing guns, or, you know, if fit really hits the shan. Uh, and then I'd probably go with a Sphinx 9mm pistol, because it's incredibly accurate, very controllable, and 9mm is probably going to be very easy to find. Yeah, so I was thinking, like a Glock 17, something older reliable. Yeah, um, yeah, incredibly down. reliable. Uh, I like, I, I specifically would choose a Sphinx, just because... Um, it's going to be accurate and, and get my targets or get my sight right back on target for the next shot in case I do happen to miss. For um, sure. Yeah, it's definitely a good competition gun. Um, 
Let's see, what was the next question we're going on? Um, we're going for, uh, Andrew's asking thoughts on the LBX0094 and also outdoor versus indoor. Uh, the LBX0094 is definitely a nice plate carrier, very, very high quality, and it's nice that it comes with three integrated M4 magazine pouches, so you don't have to buy those separately. Mm -hmm. uh, most people have M4 magazines. Um, personally, I'm not a fan of it, mainly because of my body type. I'm very skinny, and that plate carrier is just a little lighter, um, so I go with something a little bit smaller or lower in profile. Uh, the plate carrier is great in itself, so I'm not talking down on it in any way whatsoever. Just personally, it's not for me. Um, outdoors versus indoors, I think they're both a lot of fun. Right now, I'm a fan more of outdoors than indoors. Um, as far as my thoughts on the LBX0094, I really like a lot of products that LBX has to offer. I don't personally own a lot because I'm really happy with the gear, <gasps> with the gear I do have, but if LBX want to send us some to use, we'd be very happy with that. Um, I really do like the plate carrier itself. I mean, I don't I don't normally go for the slimmer builds of plate carriers because I carry everything in the kitchen sink. Uh, but I do like the setup of that plate carrier. I definitely would like to run one. Um, you know, if I could afford to buy another one, I definitely would buy that one. Uh, I also do like the Banshee Rifle plate carrier. It's pretty badass. Uh, again, uh, works pretty well on folks with slimmer builds um, or folks that are in the law enforcement market. Yeah. Um, I also prefer outdoor... Uh, uh, outdoor airsoft gameplay, uh, just because it feels like more of a mental chess game against an intelligent opponent. But if I had the choice, um, you know, Balahack or fields like that where you have an outdoor airsoft playing area or area of operations with a mount town is what I would love to play. Because you get the best mix of both outdoor and urban combat. Uh, what's the next question? Uh, I think let's hold off on the questions till the end of the show because I want us to jump into our normal broad our normal program uh, so we can uh, jump into the questions right. in a little bit. Um, but yeah, so we got a lot of cool stuff for you guys today. Um, we have a new event coming up, um, so we'll jump into that in a little bit, and also some new products that we're going to uh, show you guys in a bit. So, uh, Bob, you want to jump into it first? Yes, absolutely. First of all, we have our spring giveaway ongoing. Uh, it is going to go on until June 2nd. And what's really cool about this um, is the fact that every purchase you make on airsoftgi.com or I believe gitactical.com for that matter, mm -hmm. you're going to get a code with it that you can put into a secondary website that will, will generate possibly a prize, possibly nothing. You really don't know. It could be could be a bag of BBs. It could be a pistol. It could be the grand prize, which I believe uh, one of the grand prizes is worth over $1,600, $1,500. Yes. Pretty yes. amazing. So um, that's really cool. And, you know, I am probably going to say something that you guys would have already thought of if you're listening closely is that let's say you're going to buy five bags of BBs. You could separate that up into five different orders. Uh, it may cost slightly more, maybe not. I'm not sure. But you're going to get five different codes. So it's going to increase your chances to win by five fold. So um, make sure to take advantage of that because this spring giveaway is going on until June 2nd. And I've seen some of the awesome stuff that has been put in that spring giveaway. It is ridiculous, including one of the guns specifically went up, but I'm not going to mention just yet. Um, okay, so spring giveaway going on until June 2nd. Take advantage of that. You don't want to pass up on possibly free stuff. No purchase necessary. And also, we do uh, a 2% rewards back. We've been doing that ever since I got here and then much further before. It's part of the GI Savings Trifecta. And we're the only business or only airsoft retailer in the industry that does this. So, if you make an account on airsoftgi.com or GI tactical.com and you make a purchase you are going to get two percent of your purchase back into your account i believe it takes uh two to three weeks to register and add up uh, those 40, points 45 days i believe 45 just in days. case of returns or you know any issues like that um, yeah so that's pretty standard with with any company that does something like that uh but yeah two percent back is pretty nice it's pretty good and what's really interesting is that you know when you came over from the sales department daniel you were telling me that some folks kind of forget about that they you know they create their account then they order stuff time over time over time even in store it goes to your account mm -hmm. and then they like yeah they almost have to be told like hey you have enough for like a couple mags or like you know let's say even like if they spend a lot of money like a pistol like yeah. you don't want to pass up on free stuff like that by not checking your rewards points but you also got to make sure to fill out that account because if you make a guest account for really quick purchases it's not going to calculate those rewards points so make sure to get an account and then when you make your purchases those rewards point will accumulate reward points will accumulate um do you want to take care of the acu UCP? yeah uh, so ACU, UCP right now from um, Condor, all of their ACU stuff is right now 25% off, which is definitely a heavy discount. Uh, there is no coupon codes that you need to do to apply this, count, uh, this discount. This is um, already automatic. So I know ACU is definitely a, a little bit older camouflage, but I'm personally a big fan of it. Um, I ran ACU for many, many years, and I still have uh, my gear and kit. And uh, I'll run it every now and then and use it for loaners as well, too. Uh, so if you're looking for some 
some new gear, um, and if you want a specific loadout, uh, take a look at the Condor ACU stuff. 25% uh, off is pretty dang awesome. Um, so the other cool thing that we have coming up, um, we have uh, an event on the East Coast uh, happening on May 8th. Operation Reclamation 3. Correct. And so I'm going, Bob's going, um, we are going to be uh, generals of the U.S. side, and we're actually going to be uh, leading troops into battle. To victory, man. To victory. Good recovery. Um, so if uh, you guys haven't signed up for that event, uh, first of all, sign up. And then number two, if you are signed up or planning on sign up, uh, hit up uh, Ed or Jay on the Operation uh, Reclamation group page. We are starting to organize squads because that event is coming up in a week and a half. And so you can specifically request to be under my command, to be under Bob's command, or to be under Jay's command. So you will actually be playing with us on the air airsoft battlefield. So I'm really excited to be out there. We should have uh, platoons of, I think, like 50 players a person. So my squad, you guys better be able to keep up because we're going we're gonna to wreck some havoc out there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I wager I might play until I puke. We'll see what happens, but uh, I'm going to go all out. I'm going to go all out. Well, I'm going to play until I puke and then continue on. Um, yeah, so Rec 3 should be pretty dope. I'm really excited to play the X-Zone because I've never played there before. Mm -hmm. You have, and some of the footage I saw that came back from it looked awesome. Yeah, it was um, a lot of fun. But yeah, we as the uh, the American side definitely, and American side definitely have our work cut out for us after mm. two previous uh, British Reclamation Force victories. Uh, but it should be interesting because they're going to start out the game surrounded. Yes, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting for sure. Uh, so the other cool thing is uh, we actually have. I'm going to read off uh, some of the raffle prizes that are going to be raffled off at the end of the day. Um, everybody that is attending of the event will automatically get a raffle ticket, and you'll have a chance to win some free stuff. Um, so for example, there's going to be hydration carriers from uh, Condor um, where there's going to be a barrage chest rig there's a one, there's going to be one of the new gunner lightweight plate carriers um, the gunner I think it's like the gunfighter plate carrier so that one's actually really cool in multicam and I know multicam is really big on the east coast uh, some backpacks uh, and actually a lightweight plate carrier from Condor we also have Echo One. They're providing one of the new ZB30s oh, um, AEGs. Dope. So that's going to be super cool. Uh, KWA has been kind enough, and they're going to provide one of the PTS RM4 ERG CQB guns. Uh, that gun's really fun to shoot yeah. because it's an electric gun, but kicks back and forth. Uh, and then also, one of my personal favorites, which is the KWA Mark I series. Uh, Z-Shot is being very gracious and uh, supplying us with a full metal SR25. Um, that is a pretty epic sniper rifle with a built-in MOSFET and a bunch of cool stuff. And it just looks awesome. It's like one of the coolest looking snipers. Uh, they're also providing a, a lot of sets of boogie regulators, uh, Smith Optics, and also a Tornado Grenade. So those are just some of the raffle prizes that are going to be at Off Rec 3, uh, among other things too. Um, not to mention uh, we're going to raffle off a couple of G4s. Um, Maybe an FMG4, and we're going to have a lot of free giveaways and swag and stuff like that. Bob, I feel like you're going to do something with that gun. No, no, I just saw some uh, uh, some requests to see some of the guns on the wall and some requests the MP9. I didn't mm -hmm. want to interrupt your talk about uh, about the raffle prices. i got to say, i got to give it up to Echo One for like throwing out the ZB30. I've been waiting to see that gun for yeah. quite a while, especially seeing it in action. And I really love Smith Optics, so I'm really happy that Z-Shot included that, as well as the Airsoft Innovations Tornado Grenade, because I'll probably be bringing one of those to the game. Anyway, without further further ado, this is a custom MP9 that has been tricked out by the marketing department. Now, we've also got a replica uh, B&T barrel extension on here that stands for Bruger and Thomet, which are the original real steel creators of this. Uh, we also have, I believe this is a Vism uh, green dot and red laser scope, which is, or sight, which is the same thing I have. And we got this really handy dandy green laser up on the front. So, let's check it out. PPU laser, PPU. All right, so that is the MP9 on the wall. Uh, nice. Um, so the other thing about the OPREC uh, event that's coming up is we're also going to be having a sale at GI Tactical, our retail store in Chesterfield, Virginia, the two days before the event. So May 18th is a Sunday, which is going to be Operation Reclamation 3. And then on May 16th and 17th, um, the retail store out in Virginia is going to be doing an 18% off the entire store minus the map items, uh, along with uh, another promotion where every $100 you guys spend, you'll either get a free bag of BBs or a free can of green gas at your choice. So for example, if you get 
if you buy three hundred dollars worth of stuff at the store for those two days you can get two cans of gas and a free bag of BB so uh, we're calling it up the gear up sale because we want you guys to gear up for Operation Reclamation 3 that's gonna be a lot of fun uh, we will be flying out on Friday the 16th and we'll be there on Saturday the 17th Saturday the 17th after the store closes if you guys are going to be in the area at that time there is a Mexican restaurant called Mi Hacienda that we are going to be uh, providing food for you guys if you'd like to join us and just eat and hang out and talk about airsoft and talk smack about the the next day's game so um, check out Operation Reclamation group page um, on Facebook for a lot more information and also for that meet and greet um, that meet and greet is completely free so if you guys are in the area or are sleeping at hotel the night before um, come join us and I will personally be there Bob will be there and a bunch of other guys from GI have you heard of Casa Bonita Is, isn't that I think it's South Park yeah yeah, yeah. well I, I think that's actually a real place really yeah I saw a picture of it I was like man if it's really like it is in South Park I wish Virginia had that oh with like slides and like, yeah, and like a theme yeah, park almost. like a cliff jumping yeah that sounds like fun yeah. All right. Well, uh, I actually want to just uh, answer some of the questions that have been sure. popping up in the feed real quick. Uh, some folks are asking about this jacket. This is a Vulcan jacket, which was uh, nicely sent in to us. Uh, it is very comfortable. I highly suggest checking it out. Uh, and I believe Spartan1117 GW, i.e. Gregory Wong, is here. Hey, hey Greg. Uh, I was actually just talking to him a little bit earlier. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, let's see if there's any questions that are worth answering right now. <laughs> Did anybody watch 24 last night? I haven't seen it yet, but not, I well, hope it's good. You're not going to get an immediate response. I know. I will, I'll wait for the comments to come up, but hopefully it explodes because 24 is awesome. I'm a big 24 fan. Yes, you are. Yes, did not know. Mm. Um, okay, so what else do we have coming up? We have that. Um, oh, Assault on Antioch. Do you want to jump into that one? Absolutely. Now, this is another uh, epic game that we're going to be throwing this time in Northern California. Uh, we definitely love GamePod Combat Zone as well as Craig, uh, the operator of that facility. It's an amazing facility. And in fact, it is the largest, largest indoor training facility in North America. And it shows. They definitely have a lot of space to work around there as well as quite a variety of vehicles and possibly some towed artillery, which is going to be legit. Um, so it's going to be a two-day game. It's actually the first two-day game uh, we will have held, I believe, since Tim vs. Bob 4 and 4.5, and we're going to be doing it at GamePod Combat Zone on July 12th and 13th. And not only are we doing a two-day game, which is, you know, again, going back to something new for us, we're also going to be doing something where we're selling overnight camping tickets at GamePod Combat Zone. Now, the folks at GamePod Combat Zone have generally uh, generously come up with the idea of having people sleep at the facility so that you can save money instead of buying hotel rooms. But included in this ticket for sleeping at the facility is going to be dinner on the night of the 12th as well as breakfast on the morning of the 13th. So you're going to get everything taken care of, uh, which is really great. It's going to be a fun two days of gameplay. And what's really fun and what I've always liked about not only the Tim vs. Bob series of games, but any linked series of games we have is that your actions on the first day of this event, Assault on Antioch, are going to affect the setup for the second day of the event on Assault on Antioch. Um, now, we will have a promotional video giving you a more in-depth look at the full story of this game, uh, but until that comes out, make sure to check out the tickets on airsoftgeo.com because we do have an incredibly limited number of players. We're actually capping it at 200 players per day because we... We decided in co uh, in conversations with the GamePod Combat Zone staff that 200 players is the prime number to have the maximum amount of fun at GamePod Combat Zone. We have found that once you hit 250 or even higher than that, that it gets too clustered or I guess there are too many corners that are filled up with too many people. So with the 200 number, 100 on each side, we, we really think that it's going to be a great day of gameplay both days. So I highly suggest you get on those tickets. I will be commanding the south side, uh, which will be the tan team, and the north side will be commanded by... That's classified, actually. In the video release we're going to be doing for this game, we will release the names and pictures and possibly some video of the commanders and the ex, excuse me, the commander and the executive officer for the team commanding the north side. So eagerly look out for that video coming soon on airsoftgi.com's YouTube channel. Nice. Yeah, I can't wait for that game. GamePod's awesome. Yeah, you're like likewise going to be there. I think you're going to be my ex executive officer, I believe. Yes, if, if you'll have it. Yes, well, if we get the rocket launcher, I'm just going to hand that off to you. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I shot two uh, uh, buggies last time. That was that was such a fun experience because I've never shot an airsoft rocket launcher before, let alone make it effective against like two enemy vehicles coming at me. That mm. was very, very intense. I like to say that you engage those vehicles at point-blank range because it sounds a lot more cool. I would say so. I mean, 
Realistically, if that was like a real rocket launcher, I would be dead because of how close I was. Like, well, it you was... also fired it from inside a building. That's yeah. That's definitely would not. No black. Happen. No backblast area. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh, but that was awesome. That was mm -hmm. really really cool. I agree. Uh, all right, what else do we have? All right, well, we actually uh, here at Airsoft Jazz started carrying a variety of products in Multicam Black. Uh, now, if you're not aware, uh, Multicam Black is a new camo that's being a new camo scheme that's being put out by the folks that make. Multicam. They actually came out with a variety of new camouflages. One of the ones that first piqued our interest was Multicam Black. Now, as some of you may or may not be aware, you know, if you wear uh, just black BDUs in a very dark environment, you can actually be darker than your surroundings, ironically, uh, and which will make you stand out. So, uh, there's some schools of thought that say you should wear just regular camo, uh, but again, you run the risk of standing out depending on how light or dark it is. But Multicam Black threads the middle ground right there, whereas if you are in a semi to completely dark environment, Multicam Black is going to be much better better for uh, camouflaging you against your surroundings. Also, looks awesome. So I highly suggest checking out airsoftjaw.com for multicam black hats, as well as BDUs and combat shirts. Oh, and we also have uh, multicam black backpacks, which look even cooler. Yes. Highly suggested. Guns. We All have right. a lot of new guns. Yes, we do. Let me start pulling some of these out. Can you do that? All right. Uh, let's see. I missed a shout out earlier. Team Sesame Street, shout out approved. Let's see. When will Crytek guns be available? Care of James Cruz. Okay, Crytek guns are slated to be released at some point later this month in May. Uh, hopefully we should be getting one to two guns, and there should be releases of one to two guns a month after that, but we won't know until they actually get released. Uh, everything is a to-be-determined date, so hopefully, hopefully we'll get some more information from Crytek soon. All right. So if I remember right, this should be this one here. All right, so this is uh, one of the new guns that we just got in. This is from Ares. This is the Amoeba Polymer M4 AMCG-003 with electronic trigger system airsoft gun. That is a very long length. That's a name. metal rail, though. Yes, it is a metal wow. rail. Um, so I like that this is a modular rail. Um, so this is uh, part of the new Amoeba series from uh, Z-Shot, uh, from Ares. And what's kind of cool about it is, it, yes, it is an M4, but they've done a few things that are a little bit different that I personally like. Uh, for example, this huge magazine release right, well, let me get that in camera, right there. That is probably like... That's nice. Yeah. It's like, it reminds me of, I think I'm a PDW. Yeah, uh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, for sure. Or no, maybe it's the other Amoeba guns I'm thinking of. I, I could be wrong on that one. You're talking about the smaller one, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 They have the large magazine release like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of the Amoebas are potentially going to come out with this bigger magazine release. So I mean, this isn't really going to be like a game changer or anything like that. But I like that. You know, you have gloves or whatever. There's no way you're going to miss that. Um, but you do have the electronic uh, trigger control unit on the inside, which is nice. You do have the. Um, if you guys listen, you can hear the micro switch which is really nice. So it's a very definitive trigger pull as well. You got a modular rail system as well with the um, the battery's going to be housed in the back. Now this is something that we were talking about before of, uh, you know, Aries is just kind of thinking things out a little bit better. Not a big deal, but um, if you go back here, this is going to be the battery compartment. You press down on this little switch and that gives you access to the battery. So I like that because it's just so easy to use. Once again, not a game changer or anything like that, but you can change out your batteries and you don't have to hassle um, some of the other crane stocks on the market is a little bit more of a pain. That is a very unique shape uh, for a stock, too. It looks very similar to a uh, battle axe stock. That's what I was thinking, too. It's almost like a, a hybrid between the battle axe and also a crane, because you still have that Yeah, angle, so I noticed that, yeah. It's uh, kind of cool. Uh, one thing I should just notice, because I didn't get that much time to play with these earlier today, mm -hmm. is that the magazines actually come with a pull tab on them, which is pretty cool. That's kind of nice. I believe that is a high cap or is that a mid cap? Uh, this is a high capacity magazine, which I don't know, it's, I don't know, it just looks really different than all the other mags I've seen lately. So that's pretty neat. It's a very unique looking gun, and uh, honestly, it's a very solid feel to it, which uh, is sometimes uh, un underappreciated in airsoft guns. Absolutely. Um, and then one of the nice things about this uh, series is that you got the high quality internals of Ares, but it, this is a more affordable line. So this model right here, for example, is uh, one of the more expensive in that line, but still affordable for what it is. It's about $220. Um, once you, again, you get that metal rail system that is modular, flip up and down iron sights, and overall looks pretty cool too. So let me show you guys a couple of the other models if you want to play with that. Uh, one thing that's important to note is this does have a quick change spring system as well. So it's kind of nice. You're going to get you know a metal rail system, you are going to get an electronic trigger system, and a quick change spring system, and well, this cool magazine, which is pretty dope in my opinion. Um, oh, this is really lightweight too, I like that. 
That's nice. So I think this one would be for me more. <laughs> the more I look at the stock is the, the more I like it. Um, this is definitely the CQB variant. So you have about like a four inch barrel that's pretty small. Um, very CQB and uh, compact. So everything else here in the back um, is the same as uh, the one we have over here, but we just have the shorter barrel and the rail system as well. And then I believe we have one more mid-length variation I like this. for you guys. I'm digging this one. Yeah, what's the FPS on that one? Like uh, it says uh, it actually says it shoots 290 to 300, so oh, that's okay. going to be really great for CQB, and it's going to leave you a lot of room to upgrade aftermarket as you see fit, either to do the rate of fire or to do the FPS up to more competitive level. So this is just really comfortable. I just that that's really nice. Okay, I take it back. This would be my first pick. That's what I was thinking. This is like a ten and a half inch barrel. It looks like mm -hmm. um, you got flip up and down iron sights on this one, which I do like. But then you also have rails on top of the gas block or the fake gas block, I should say. Um, and yeah, pretty solid. Um, these other ones are going to be a little bit less expensive. The CQB one here is going to be 200 um, and then this mid-length one right here, or I would say this is more CQB, um, is about 190 So pretty cool. You also have an enhanced trigger guard in here, which is kind of nice. Yes, especially if you use uh, gloves. Yeah, I in think cold weather. Oh, man. For sure. Mm-hmm. All right, why don't we see what's going on on the questions? Uh, yeah, let's start, we, if you want to jump back into some of these. Okay. That's where we left off. All right. Okay. Wait, did you already do the flakjack goggles or Desert Locust? I have not done that. Okay. All right, Matthew Glauber, uh, Glauber, I'm sorry if I said the name incorrectly, flakjack goggles or Desert Locust to go with a mesh lower face mask? Ooh, that's a good question. I generally... Uh, I generally err on the side of Desert Locust goggles because I haven't had that many that much experience with Flakjack goggles, but I have used Desert Locust. They are really good, um, but you use lower face masks much more than I do, but I know you prefer Bolas, I believe. Yes. Um, what I would say, if you have the Flakjacks or the Desert Locust, if I remember correctly, and Bob correct me if I'm wrong, is the Desert Locust has uh, the rubber that goes against your face. Uh, compared to the flak jack, which is going to be foam. Mm -hmm. If you're going with mesh goggles, from my experience, the mesh match which is better with the foam because the foam is squishy. So when you put the goggles over the mesh, there's a better chance of it being the full seal. With the locust, because it's a hardened rubber that goes on your face, it's not as flexible and it's not going to mesh <laughs> mesh with the mesh mask. Uh, so that would be a concern. Um, everyone's face is different, uh, so it may or may not work out well, but my initial thought is go with the flak jack goggles if you're going with a lower mesh mask. That's my first thought. That is a very good point, and because I don't use lower mesh masks, uh, well, really, ever, um, then I'm glad you were there to answer that. Um, do, 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 do. What is the next one? Um, David. David Conch, or Conch, or Conch A. Uh, what are your thoughts about using real steel parts on airsoft guns? Daniel, why don't you go first? Uh, yeah. By all means, if you have the means or the funds to use real steel parts, I would say definitely go for it. I've seen uh, a bunch of guys use like real aim points or real uh, EOTEX uh, or hollow sights on um, you know their airsoft guns. Uh, you know that'd be up to you if you don't mind the chance of it getting shot out. Um, I've seen real steel rails on guns. Uh, a lot of real, uh, you know, a lot of uh, different tactical gear from different companies and stuff like that. So I'd say by all means go for it. Um, I personally use a Primary Arms uh, micro dot on uh, one of my guns, and that's designed for real steel as well. So um, yeah, I'd say there's nothing wrong with it. Just keep in mind if some of that stuff is more expensive, you don't want it to break or shatter or anything like that. Um, but by all means, what do you think? Um, I think using real steel parts on airsoft guns is a really good way to go about, you know, training the ma manipulation of your airsoft gun as if it were a firearm. Uh, because you know, ammo is not cheap. In fact, it's pretty expensive in some areas of the country, like California. And uh, you know, having the ability to use your airsoft gun as a training a training platform with your real steel parts is an invaluable tool. Tool. And in fact, many different law enforcement agencies all across the country use the same method in that they'll use airsoft guns with the same setup as the real firearms. So that they can save money on a lot of their weapons manipulation training. Uh, now that said, uh, I prefer not to use real sights on my airsoft guns because I'm so worried about them getting shot out. Even with you know a BB shield, sometimes I forget to put the BB shield on. Sometimes I hit the gun so hard it falls off, and then I get the scope shot. So I generally prefer to use airsoft only sights. 
um, or scopes, and that's also for the fact that those scopes, if they do break, are generally a lot more affordable than anything from the real steel world. I mean, if you have a Neotech, that's like five, six hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh man, if I got that shot out, I would. I'd I'd be, cry. I would cry. I would. I would, I would, I would that's that. That'd be awful. Yeah, I would be crying home with just a giant thing of chips or cookies. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, uh, yeah. But real Neotechs are nice. I know we have one in the back, um, which is the bosses, and so we'll play around with it, which we can't take out to go play with. No, no, we never take it out to go play with it. Ever. Ever. We'll, uh, Ever. <laughs> we'll uh, you know, use it in videos and stuff like that every now and then, and like it's a dramatic difference because you know there's a reason why you know some of this equipment is six hundred, seven hundred dollars, a thousand dollars for that kind of stuff. Um, I do want to say I saw a comment from uh, Greg Spartan. Um, he said there's not enough PTS guns in the background. Well, Greg, I think you should do something about that. I think you should give us some PTS guns, and we'll put a lot of PTS guns in the back. So. Yeah, Greg, we could really use an arm four to take out. Yeah, like an arm four, maybe like a Mega Arms that's working. Fine. I mean, and, I, I uh, am going to Operation Reclamation three soon. I, you know, I'm just that's, saying. That's you know, true. I, so I, we're calling you out, Greg. We're calling yeah, you out. I mean, I, I am going to need that gun to be shipped out. You know where tomorrow. we are. Well, we'll be here. So, mm. we'll, we'll be here. Yeah. Anywho, um, I am actually going to be putting uh, some PTS products on my LM4, which I will be shipping out to Operation Reclamation three. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be actually putting a PTS Go Gun gas pedal on it, um, and I'm probably going to be putting on a, uh, a PTS Battle Comp. I believe it's a 2.0 because I like the look of it, uh, and I like Battle Comp products. Very cool. Um, what's the next question? What Jeff is asking, what is the best standalone grenade launcher and opinions on them? Mm, grenade launchers is actually something that I have very little experience with uh, in terms of actually playing. I don't own any grenades or grenade launchers. Uh, well, I have like you know handheld grenades that you throw, but never like a, like a 40 mic or anything like that. Uh, it's something I've always wanted to play around with, but I can never justify the extra weight on my gun. Hmm. But they look like a lot of fun. Uh, if I were to get like a standalone. Does like the six shot revolver count as a standalone? Yeah, that's a standalone grenade. Launcher. Okay, I'll, I'll just take one of those and just. Um, ICX or ICS does make uh, the GLM. Uh, some other companies that make it called the MGL, um, the multiple grenade launcher. Uh, but the ICS GLM is basically a uh, revolving grenade launcher that holds six shells. Uh, I have been shot by those before, and it is pretty fun. Uh, it also is fun to shoot those at people. Um, I uh, at least for the. Uh, first half of my Milsim career uh, going to Lion Claws operations all the way up until I believe Lion Claws 7. Uh, I generally was rocking an underslung grenade launcher. Actually, I take it back all the way up until Lion Claws 10. I had an underslung grenade launcher in the event that we ran into armor mm -hmm. um, because it is at least slightly effective in stopping that armor from hitting you. Um, so I really like uh, having a grenade launcher under my gun, and hopefully, you know, it doesn't weigh that much. But if it does, so be it. You know, I'll suck it up. Um, but if yeah, if you're going for a multiple shell grenade launcher, let me just look at the question again. Uh, standalone grenade launcher. Okay, so best standalone grenade launcher. Um, you know, if you're looking for firepower, I would go with the ICS uh, GLM, or at least any grenade launcher. Like you know, Pro Arms makes one that has. Uh, multiple shells that you can cycle back and forth between. However, if I had if I had my druthers and I could pick whatever I wanted, um, Lancer Tactical as well as Ares as well as a few other manufacturers make a grenade launcher that fits onto the scar. Um, they make those uh, both as standalone versions or as versions that can uh, that can you can rail or excuse me you can attach to your gun using rails. And some of these, let me actually take a look at this one in particular. Um, do, 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 do. No, that one is just the standalone. So basically, you can buy the standalone or the one that fits onto your scar. I think they look great. Um, some people will actually take the standalone one and just clip it to the side of their backpack so they can access it really quickly in, in case armor does approach. And that is actually a really good way of holding it so it's not just kind of dragging down the front of your gun um, in case that is a worry for you. So, um, yeah, I would suggest, you know, Lancer Tactical has one. It is priced, looking at our website, at $170, but that is because it is a really cool looking one, and the, uh, their standalone version that looks like the one on the SCAR, again, looks awesome, so that's why it costs that much, in my opinion. I, I really like this, too, because I feel like the way they blend with the SCARs is organic is the best word I can use to describe it. Like, it just blends in very, very nicely, where, like, a classic M203 looks more mechanical in nature, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I just like the way it looks. Well, it's really cool about uh, some of the versions that go with the SCARs is that 
um, you know, you'll mount it to the gun, and someone will have uh, a magazine well extender so that it'll actually connect to the magazine well. Mm -hmm. And then behind that is actually the trigger. So you can be firing the scar, and then you just take so, like your two lower fingers, and you pull the grenade launcher. So it's really easy. You don't have to actually move your hand down, which takes some time. You don't yeah. have to move your other hand forward. You basically just go firing, grenade launcher. Good to go. So that's really nice and just, you know, an added feature for a scar. That is definitely a big advantage, an improvement to over the M203 for sure. Yeah. Uh, we actually haven't gotten into the topic with which we named the show, mm -hmm. uh, which was, you know, guns from movies. Uh, but more specifically, uh, guns from movies and TV shows. We actually have been going over guns from uh, the series 24, which Daniel is a huge fan of, aren't you? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Jack Bauer. Jack Bauer. Jack Bauer. What would Jack Bauer do? Damn um, it. He just yells, damn it, all the time. Yeah. And just asks where the bomb is. Where's the bomb? Where's my family? Where's my wife? <laughs> That's exactly. That's like all of 24 if you guys ever watched that show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were uh, talking about t uh, TV shows and movies. So we actually brought some guns out that were used in 24. And we actually got decked out some of them. So I know we got the pistol over here. But let me pull out some of the other guns. No, I forget what seasons. Um, Jack used these guns, but this is a, a scar that he used in one of the previous seasons. And so this is a, a basic VC scar, but we set it up um, how uh, you saw it in that season. And I just think it's kind of cool because with Airsoft, you know, if you have a favorite, you know, TV show or movie or video game or somebody that you want to impersonate, I think it's kind of cool to see or that you have the chance to uh, modify your gun. To you know your favorite character, so I'm kind of curious. How many of you guys have ever decked out a gun, or would want to deck out a gun, uh, specifically towards like a character that you've seen before, and what character would it be? So post in the comments. I'm kind of curious to see. Um, but that kind of brings us back to that topic of like, what do you think are some of the coolest video game or movie or TV sh uh, TV show guns that you've seen out there? I see Rambo. Someone said Rachel. Rachel. Is that his wife's name? Uh, no. Daughter? His wife's name was Terry. Mm. So I'm thinking maybe that's Batman? Where's Rachel? Rachel. Rachel. Oh, yeah. That makes yeah. more sense, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Banana Bread just made hashtag Captain America Winter Soldier Scorpion. We actually, uh, we just got the, uh, I believe the electronic or the AEG version of that Scorpion available. In, uh, or we just got it into our inventory at airsoftgi.com. Mm -hmm. So you can actually check out our new product, scroll down and check out that Scorpion. If you do like that gun from the movie, Captain America Winter Soldier. Uh, but yeah, this is a really cool setup. I actually, uh, it reminds me of the scar I took to Irene many, many moons ago. And I had a grip pot on that there as well. Um, bingo. It's actually, what's really nice about these grip pods is that they may not be the the coolest looking grip, but they're very functional. And then obviously they afford you a vertical foregrip, but they also afford you, afford you a bipod, which you can use on the field. And in addition to that, when you need to set down your gun and you don't want to get it dirty, you flick the bipod out and it'll stand straight up. It's nice. Definitely very cool. Yep. Uh, what would you say is some of your favorite guns that you've seen in a movie or a TV show that you would love to have in re either real steel or airsoft? I'm glad you mentioned that because I actually printed that out. Uh, I was actually <laughs> going through the guns of Expendables because I wanted to find a movie that had my favorite gun that I want an airsoft version of and that I need a real steel version of, which would be the AA-12 the AA fully automatic and semi-automatic shotgun. You seen that? Yes. It's dope. That would be awesome. Yeah. I actually saw someone or I saw a video of someone mounting two of those upside down on a, uh, a track mobile drone. Um, they put two 30 round drum mags on it and just let loose. And it was a little dangerous. I saw, um, I think it was a documentary or some TV show where they were talking about the AA-12, but they were also talking specifically about this shotgun slug that was, they described it as like a mini grenade launcher. So it mm -hmm. was like a, a 12 and I guess it had an explosive. Yep. And so they had it in the AA-12 and it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh my God, that would just destroy everything. Yeah, there, there are a lot of specialty or specialist uh, 12 gauge rounds and yeah I had heard I had heard they had developed the 12 gauge rounds with grenade shells in them they also even have 12 gauge round with taser shells where it'll actually hit you uh -huh. lock into you and the back <laughs> part of it it'll actually slam back down and connect with you again and once the second charge hits you uh -huh. that's when it shocks you huh it's pretty crazy. That would suck. So you're getting hit by a small 12 gauge slug in a sense, and then it comes down and shots you. Well, yeah, then, yeah, it's basically a taser shell. Dang, that's yeah. brutal. It's crazy. Very sure. expensive, too. I imagine. Uh, but what other guns? All right, so from Expendables or Jack Bauer? Mm, or 24. Start with uh, 24 since you're on that. All right, so this is a list of actually, I believe, all of the guns that are used in there, not just by Jack Bauer. So, first of all, we got the Breda 92FS, the Breda 92. 
92G Elite 1A, uh, custom single action army, Glock 17, Glock 26, modified Kimber Gold Combat 2, custom M1911A1, Heckler and Cock P9S, Heckler and Cock USP. Boom! This is the USB Compact. Smith & Wesson 469, 6RP228, and the Browning High Power, which is a really great gun. Uh, H&K MP5K, H&K MP5K PDW, Bruger & Thomas MP9, which is on the wall right, uh, right we also have the there. Hot down gun over there, too. Yes, we do. Uh, the FN9 P90TR, we also, uh, in that show, is also the FN F2000 Tactical, which is what uh, I believe Charlie from Level Cap Gaming uses that, the FN2000 Tactical. Mm -hmm. uh, Noveski Rifle Works Diplomat, of which we have similar airsoft guns on our website. Clash to Call Variants, Norinco Type 56. Wow, that's, that's crazy they have that. And I guess they do have the AA-12 in... N24, as well as the Saiga 12, Serbu, Serbu Super Shorty. Uh, they also have the M1919 A4 30 caliber machine gun, World War II status, nice. Browning M2 aircraft heavy machine gun, the M79 grenade launcher, old faithful, and the M8 flare pistol, and the M67 hand grenade. That's a lot of guns. I take it back. That was my mistake. Those are all from the movie Expendables. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just realized that, yeah, whatever. Um, but as far as the guns from Jack Bauer, we actually did pull out two guns. Uh, actually, three guns for this live show. First of all, we had the SCAR, the VFC SCAR on there, and we also have this USB Compact, which is actually a very fun airsoft pistol. Um, do you want to talk more about the USB Compact, Daniel? Uh, this gun, I would say, is probably the most iconic gun that Jack uses. He also used a two-tone uh, T26, a six-hour T26 for a long time at the beginning of the show. Uh, but for the majority of it, I don't want to say the majority, but I feel that the USP Compact is definitely more iconic uh, that he that he uses most often. Uh, when you see him running around, you know, saving the world, stopping the terrorists and stuff like that, he generally uses just a pistol because he's super mobile and badass like that doesn't need a rifle um, you know he'll jump around with uh, the scar and we have an EBR that he used in season seven was it could be wrong on that that was pretty cool um, and I always thought that it was a normal USP for the longest time until I had to look it up and it was a USP compact uh, which is the smaller brother of the USP um, and I believe now in the new season that's coming out right now he's, he's using a p30 if I remember correctly. Um, so he does like his H&K guns. Uh, they yes, he do does. work well. Um, but it's kind of cool that I definitely see this gun now as the gun of Jack Bauer. It is really iconic, especially in his hands. And on all those posters, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I always thought that he just had like the biggest hands ever because he always made the gun look so small until I realized, once again, it's the compact version. So I was like, ooh, movie magic or whatever. I don't know. Um, but let me grab the EBR. Let me answer a question real quick or a statement, actually. John Curry. Um... Let's see, what did he say? No Nerf axes still. Um, we are actually working, or I am specifically working on uh, designing my own personal or personally designed Nerf axe. Um, sadly, those Nerf axes were discontinued by the company Nerf. I called them personally, and their decision is final. So sadly, the, the last ones that are on the market are going to go, but hopefully we'll have some uh, sometime near in the future for your guys' perusal. All right, on to the M14. So this, was, uh, this is uh, an M14 EBR, or Enhanced Battle Rifle. I believe on our website this is labeled as the M14 HBA Law. Yes. Yes. Uh, I was speaking more specifically about the, the real steel version, mm -hmm. I believe. But for the airsoft, yeah, this is actually, airsoft-wise, um, probably one of the uh, better, um, in my opinion, better um, M14s out there. And so this is a setup of how Jack used it um, in one of the seasons. I believe he was getting revenge for... <laughs> Uh, one of his loved ones that was murdered. Um, it's been a while since I've seen that season. So he had a peck box on the side and this really awesome looking scope and really, really cool looking gun. So um, Jack did some work on that for sure. And uh, this gun, I, I always loved EBRs. Um, they just look mechanical and mean and just ready to do some damage. So It'd be nice to get set up on the outside of a mount facility with this this gun all like tricked out on the inside, just be able to get some DMR action. Seriously, like mm -hmm. this with like a miracle barrel and let's say it's like five fifty, you know, FPS. Like I'd love to just sit there with a the bipod and just you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. Like I don't think I've ever used a bipod in a game before. I uh, really just want to throw a shout out to Steven Taz and Jay Palaz. They are both here. It's good to see you guys again. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't see the comments, but what did people say that they wanted or they liked in the movies or TV show? Did you see any comments? Oh, uh, no. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I have seen a couple folks requesting uh, some of the guns off of our back wall, though. That's out what I was actually trying to grab before, because we have 
Um, if I can, uh, you know, can you hold this for a second? Nah. Oh, use the bite button. That's a spirit. Um, over here we have those two painted M4s. That is uh, the Black Hawk Down M4. Oh, I'm messing this up. Um, and also uh, the 416 that was based off Zero Dark Thirty. Uh, so I think it's interesting how you know all these really cool movies and video games and TV shows, uh, you know, influences here in the airsoft world. Where I remember after Zero Dark Thirty, uh, everyone started picking up the 416s, and even before the 416 was definitely popular. Um, but it's kind of cool to see that you know you see really awesome action sequence in a movie or something like that. It's like, oh yeah, I want that loadout or I want that gun. Or the other one that was big for me was, I think we talked about this in the in the marketing department a little while ago, uh, when Tommy Lee Jones used the Glock 17 in The Fugitive uh, when he was chasing um, Harrison Ford, I believe. Mm. Uh, yeah, go ahead. That was really iconic to me because I saw that in the way, because Tommy Lee Jones is a big guy, so his hand just like completely engulfed that Glock mm -hmm. 17. He was like, Bray! I was like, oh man, that looks so cool. And he had that the M3 flashlight at the bottom and everything. I was like, dang, I want, and actually I did pick up uh, an old KSC G17 as my first gas blowback pistol because of that movie. Now you so got I, that overseas, right? Uh, no, it was, I'm sorry, not the KSC, but it was the old KWA years ago when they still made the G17. Mm -hmm. So it was KWA. Um, I actually, uh, it's funny because I remember the movie U.S. Marshals, also with Tommy Lee Jones, and he actually gives a big speech in that movie about, hey man, throw away this like sissy whatever gun you have, get a Glock because it's going to function no matter what. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's really funny that the iconic uses of the Glock 17 for movies for us were both Tommy Lee Jones related. For sure. Yes. Um, do, 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 do. I saw some people were talking about some movies. What was one? A Clone Trooper? That'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, actually, real quick. Um, Banana Bread, I mentioned this earlier. I wanted to address it. Um, he was saying if we could get something, we should get the corner shot from Israel. Ooh. Have you heard of that? The corner shot is that's the one where it's it's a pistol, but then has a screen on it, and actually like yeah, I've, yeah. I've seen it. And then go around corners. That's yeah. that's so overpowered. That'd that's be awesome. It'd be really fun, but you know uh, what's that rule in airsoft? Uh, blind, blind firing. firing. Blind. I mean, technically it's not blind firing, but technically it is. So yeah. And I don't think fun, air, I don't think airsoft guns are you know that accurate enough that you could. Uh, I guess you could plug it in there and still get some shots if somebody's close, but I think it's pretty cool. I actually used to have uh, a tiny little mirror or an extender that I would use at Tax City just to look around the corner, nice. and I used it probably two or three times before. Like so I literally saw a guy through the mirror, and he just turned his gun and just wasted the mirror. I was like, well, that's fair play, I guess. Gotcha. Yeah. Alrighty. You want to maybe jump into a few more questions? Yeah, sure. All righty. Um, grab that earth tone. <laughs> grab that earth tone sniper in the back. Would you? Do you mind grabbing the AAC twenty one? Oh, with pleasure. Yes. Oh, it's tied down. Oh, is it tied down? Yeah. Dang it! Uh, we had uh, a lot of earthquakes uh, recently, and so we had to zip tie a lot of that stuff so things don't fall and break and hurt anybody and stuff like that. Because weren't all the guns on the floor when we got here? Yeah, there was yeah. there was actually some uh, some damage. We had a. I think it was like a se not a seven. It was like a six point something in um, in Brea, which is is actually La Habra. La Habra, yes, where I live. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. I wasn't gonna say where you live, but you already said it, so too. Oh, right. it's out there. Whatever. Um, but yeah, so things were shaking, and my apartment got a little messed up, but not too big of a deal. Yeah. Um, what was the last question that we had on here? I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, Ada's is asking, uh, any news on the New York store? Uh, I can't say anything yet about the New York store. And the other question I was asking is, what are your opinions on the uh, on do-it-yourself mods? Um, yeah, go for it for sure. Do-it-yourself mods are always a lot of fun. Um, I used to do a lot of my own silly modifications on my own airsoft gun because I'd get an idea in my head that like I want a red dot but no triangle front sight, but I don't want to buy another gas block, so I'd cut it off myself. So, you know, stuff like that. Silly stuff. Uh, now, I would actually go the opposite route in that I haven't had a lot of great luck with do-yourself mods. Uh, I have been able to change out the internals on some of my gas snipe rifles, but the first couple times I did that, I really screwed them up and had to go into uh, my local store and get them semi-fixed. They didn't completely fix them because they didn't know what they were doing either. Uh, um, so I generally like to go to my tech friends or specifically to the tech department of Airsoft GI because I, I'm pretty darn sure. I would say bet my life on it that I'm going to get a good job done. Um, it's pretty amazing what our world-class tech department comes out with, especially custom guns, which I think we, someone asked earlier if there was some stuff from Lone Survivor 
Uh, we didn't do a Lone Survivor style gun yet, have we? Uh, we did two Lone Survivor guns, and then we sold them, and we gave 100% of the proceeds to the Marcus Luttrell uh, Foundation. Who mm. uh, Marcus Luttrell is the the Lone Survivor who this, um, the story was based off of. Um, so we decided uh, to uh, go that route because we wanted to be respectful of the story and all the men and uh, women of the, the armed forces. Um, so those guns are actually really cool because, once again, Tech's world class, super awesome. They built two M4s that looked really amazing. I think it was like a block one, block one and a half, if I remember correctly. But the paint job that Spencer did, that thing sold in like a minute because it was so cool. Yeah, they've been sequentially getting better and better at their paint jobs, and they've never been like really crappy at it but it's just been getting better so yeah. i gotta really hand it to spencer uh you know that is a really great job spencer if you're watching well played sir and aaron if you're watching i will crush your space marines excuse me chaos space marines um all right so next question next question is from one he's asking for a sniper build for a kwa m16 which inner barrel length should i use 509 or 590 um the stock barrel length should be 509 or 510 so I would recommend leaving it at that. If you go 590, that is really long. You might have to change out the components of the uh, compression to make sure you match the uh, air volume with the barrel length of the gun. Uh, 509, in my experience, is more than enough barrel length. Yeah. Uh, you can get like a solid Prometheus barrel or a Miracle barrel. or uh, If you like Prometheus and uh, like an R-Hop, would work really, really well. So I think that should be fine. That's what I would recommend. Hmm. Uh, I would go that route too because I definitely do not, I generally do not like having a barrel extension um, that I have to have on there. Like, you know, if, if, if it needs to be there to cover the extended inner barrel, I just, I, I don't like uh, the lack of options. You yeah. know what I mean? That makes um, sense. So yeah, no, I would definitely go with the 509 as well. Uh, TJ o Okamura, Banshee or 6094? Ooh, burping up a storm. Um, I would generally go with the 6094. I like that setup a lot better, uh, although the Banshee is an incredibly well-built play carrier. There's a lot of folks in our department, specifically Mark, who has a Banshee, mm -hmm. uh, and what's great about that is that Mark is a very, very speedy individual, and he can carry a lot of gear on that Banshee rifle play carrier and still be active and very fast, so I got nothing against the Banshee. I just slightly prefer the 6094 more, but this is really all about you know, how each of these pieces of gear is going to work for you individually. So, you know, you should really, like, think about it really hard and make your own personal decision about what's best for you. Yeah. Daniel? I'd go with the Banshee. Um, the 16, uh, 6094 is a great plate carrier as well and extremely high quality. But once again, I think for my body type, I'm a little bit more skinny. Um, I think the Banshee fits me better. I've had a chance to try on... Um, actually, both of them. Um, when I was in Virginia, some of the VA guys had uh, 6094s. Mm -hmm. So I would personally go with the Banshee, um, but I think, like what Bob said, it's going to come down to personal preference. Uh, if you are local to our retail store in Chesterfield, Virginia, or here in Walnut, California, you know, come into the store, and one of the nice things about the store is you can try on plate carriers before you buy them. So, you know, it's like, oh, this one fits great, or this one's too big or too small or whatever. So I would say try them out if you get a chance. Or, you know, the other thing is um, when you're out in the field, if you see something that you're thinking about buying, you know, ask somebody. Most people are pretty friendly. It's like, hey, man, can I, I'm thinking about getting that gun. You know, hey, what do you, what do you think of it? You know, mind if I check it out really quick? Most people are pretty nice, too. Yeah, I, I would agree that a lot of people like the attention on their own gear because they appreciate it. Oh, yeah. um, all right, first of all, Marcus Childs, shout out to Prove. Um, oh shoot! I, I want to give a shout out to White Fire Airsoft One One Seven because he's calling me a ninja. So shout out because <laughs> I am a ninja. Nice. Shout out. Clayton Nichols, shout out approved. And finally, Keiston Clark, shout out approved. Gotcha. So we got about ten minutes left and a bunch more questions. So we're gonna keep going. Uh, Thomas is asking VFC or Echo One Platinum Series. Uh, VFC versus the Echo One Platinum Series versus the Apex. So I think that's a one versus one versus one. No, that's more of a one versus one because... Yes, that's what I was going to explain. Go so, for it. Uh, if you're not familiar, the first one was a VFC versus the Echo One Platinum Series. Uh, that is still a VFC. So the Echo One Platinum Series is OEM'd by VFC, so it will perform exactly like a VFC. Um, the trademarks on it are different to say Echo One Platinum Series, but in terms of performance, reliability, accuracy, consistency, all of that stuff is exactly the same. So the question comes down to really VFC or Apex. Um, I've been using the Apex at some of our recent, uh, or my recent days of going out in the field, and it works really, really well. I'm really happy with it. 
I would still have to go with the VFC though just because it's more reliable and it's going to uh, be more compatible in terms of internal parts if you want to upgrade it. Although the Apex, Apex is a lot of fun to shoot because it has that mechanical blowback. So if I had to choose e either one, like I'd be happy to get one or the other, but between the two, go with the VFC. Yeah, I was going to say, I haven't had the opportunity to um, play Airsoft with the Apex gun, although hopefully at Operac uh, 3 I will have that opportunity. So I can't give you, um, I guess, really good verifiable information, but I do trust my gut, and my gut trusts VFC guns. So, yep. All right, next question is from Corey. He's asking, what do you think of the Spartan 6 AAV? That thing's pretty cool. Um, you guys uh, decked that thing out pretty well. It looked like a, a Jeep or something before, and I saw how the way you guys mounted the guns and the guys um, hopped out of the, um, the back you know, really quick, so it was almost like a fast attack vehicle. Definitely really cool. I can see you guys put a lot of time and effort into making that thing awesome. Um, yeah, ha have you seen that? What's that? The uh, Spartan 6 AAV. It's like this assault attack vehicle. It's, I don't think I have it. It's a it's a full vehicle. I think it was a Jeep, if I remember correctly. And they turned it into this like airsoft like tank. There's like guns mounted on it, and the back doors like swing out, and guys can hop out and stuff. So it's pretty cool. I certainly love to see it. Yeah, I'll should definitely shoot you a link later on. But next question is Raul's asking, what's the best gun within the 200 to 250 dollar range? What do you think? So that's a tough one. I mean, my Hmm. FMG4. I was saying, my instinct is telling me to go with the FMG4, not only because it's OEM by Lonex, which obviously they make high quality internals and their externals are, forgive the expression, damn good. Um, but also the fact that, you know, with our FMG4s, you get so many different options that are put together by our techs that you're going to get generally a rail setup on there on a full metal gun that has Lonex internals. So I guess for the money, you can't really beat the deal of an FMG4. Um, and what's great about the FMG Force 2 is they've, they've been independently reviewed and have gotten ridiculously high marks, especially from the folks at Airsoftology. Mm. Um, so yeah, FMG 4 probably I'm just kind of like pulling stuff out of my brain to try and find something that's a better deal for 250 but I can't think of anything that's a better deal. It's probably a really, really good pick. Uh, yeah. Even like the G4 line, uh, that starts at like 210, uh, which is based off the G&G &G internals, that's really solid. Um, another great choice is we have a bunch of KWA CQR packages right now for $200. You can get KWA CQR Mod 1 or Mod 2 with a total of three magazines that are all mid caps, which is a crazy good deal. If you were to get all that separately, it'd cost you, I think, like $220, $230 ish. Uh, we also have, do we still have the packages available with the, the tactical gear? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, definitely. So we have packages available for, I believe, let's say, I believe the, the packages that have the three extra mid capacity magazines are $200. And for fifteen dollars extra, two fifteen, you get a Dragon Spine belt system, which is a belt system with a dump pouch and two uh, M4 magazine pouches that hold two to three M4 mags apiece. And you're also going to get a Griffin Golden chest rake, which can hold nine M4 mags or six AK mags, and it has a giant pouch for maps, accessories, and what else. Uh, and you're also going to get, I believe, on top of that, a total of seven magazines. So for fifteen dollars extra, you are getting an absurd amount of stuff. Um, the good thing about the CQRs, though, is they're designed specifically for indoor room-to-room -room combat, so they're going to be shooting just below 350 feet per second. So, if you do want to get an indoor gun with a really sweet setup, check out the CQR packages. Um, but if you are looking for, you know, maybe a more outdoor gun that's already kind of customed out, definitely check out the FMG4s. For sure. Uh, Milsim Miles is asking, are there other stocks that fit batters besides crane besides crane stock uh, full stocks um, so yeah a full stock will definitely fit um, a lot of other batteries um, even uh, like an LE stock will still fit a battery um, but it depends on the buffer tube what I miss Scott Sloan will a cheeseburger work in my KWA in four I can't get it to feed properly well you see you gotta make sure that I can't even, I can't even do this that, that was funny <laughs> that was pretty good <laughs> um, what was the question? Um, battery stock. Are there any other stocks that fit batteries besides crane uh, or full stocks? Um, yeah, uh, I personally use a buffer tube to hide my battery, but then the problem is I have to go with a really small battery. Yes. The other stock that works really well is like those 416 stocks that are like mini full, full stocks. They're like this big, but they are a triangle and they're hollow inside, so you can fit a pretty big size battery. Um, I like those stocks a lot too. Those are definitely my favorite. Uh, as I'm sure a lot of you wouldn't be surprised, I actually really like the Troy Battleax stock. Uh, you can fit, uh, you know, obviously a bigger battery as well as a lot of other accessories in there and looks like Max, which is a plus. 
see what you did there for me. X. Yeah. All right. Next question. Um, Robert is asking. I want to. I wanted to know if the Lonex Recoil M4 will be Canada legal. I want to get into airsoft, but want to get an electric blowback. Um, I believe if the FPS is the same on the final production model, it should be Canada legal. No, Canada legal is like three sixty six to so like four thirty. I thought. Yes, something, something like, like that. that. I believe I, it's above 366. Yes, it has to be three, 366, and I think it was like 4 or something. You're right. So this gun, the, the sample we have right now is shooting around 400 FPS. So if the final version is shooting around there, that should be fine. But I don't want to get your hopes up because, once again, it's a sample. If the details change or the FPS change, um, just... Just be aware, you know, that's not 100% set in stone, but that thing was a lot of fun. Uh, Bob, you did the video on that. What were your thoughts on that Lone XM4? Um, I really like it. You know, it has uh, a lot of recoil, uh, especially for an AEG. I mean, it's the Lone XM4 recoil, unless we get a better name for it soon. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, and, you know, I... I just had a really good, uh, really fun time with it. It's it's similar in that you know it has a similar amount of recoil as an RM4. I'm actually looking that up right now to see what the FPS is um, because the RM4 is put out by PTS. Um, let's see here. Okay, three. Okay, so the Magpul PTS RM4 Scout uh, is actually 390 to 410, so that looks like it's probably going to be Canada legal. So if you needed a gun with that much recoil soon, I would suggest the Magpul PTS RM4 Scout. But if you want to wait, I don't know, shoot, like three, six months? I'm, I don't have any Yeah, we, yeah, we, we so don't know how soon sure it's going to come out. Um, so yeah, if you want it now, check out uh, the Magpul PTS RM4 Scout electric recoil gun. That is more than likely to be Canada legal. Um, so yeah, I really liked it. I mean, I really didn't have any negative points about it. Uh, one positive point that a lot of people may not have noticed from the video is the fact that when you fire the gun, it has a very distinctive snap, and it sounds really cool. It sounds, I don't know, just more scary, I guess, than it's like loud. a regular, yeah, it's loud. It's, it's much louder than a normal AEG, which I, I really like. All right. Wait, wait, real quick. Uh, why does Canada legal have to be above 366? We don't know. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it's just a law that was instituted by the Canadian government. Um, I do find it a bit odd that they limit you to the higher feet per seconds, but, you know, there are a lot of a lot of laws in Canada, just like in the United States, that don't seem to completely make sense. I talked with some folks in Canada at SHOT Show, this, not this last year, but the year previous. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, we can't own a snub-nosed revolver, but we can sure as heck own a mortar, and we do. That makes no sense. No, nope, they can fire training rounds out of it. Huh. We can't own a snub nose revolver. Really interesting. Yeah, well, I mean, to each their own. We are laboratories of democracy all over North America, so. Definitely. Um, Next question is from Ty Miller. He's asking, looking for, he's looking for a solid DMR build, preferably under $400 if possible. Um, if you're talking about just a base gun, I would recommend, and uh, I can vouch for the techs because I've done this many times, is that they would recommend a VFC M16 uh, or sorry, the Echo One M16 Platinum Edition, uh, because it's a full-size length M16, but it's very upgradable uh, for a DMR. You want something that's upgradable so you can put in different springs and different uh, internal parts so you can make it shoot harder, faster, more accurate, and stuff like that. And that gun is extremely upgradable with all the parts. I don't think anything's proprietary in that. Um, so that's what's really nice about those guns. Um, and then from there, you can have a really solid base gun to start off of, but then once you want to upgrade the internals, more range, more accuracy, different barrels, you can do that. So that's what I would recommend. Uh, really quickly, Samuel Morrison, shout out approved. Yes. Uh, all right, next question is from Akino. Uh, what kind of upgrades do you recommend for a Wii 1911? Um, one of the, my favorite upgrades that was actually for a Wii 1911, but I ended up putting in my TM uh, MEU, was the Madbull 6.01 longer inner barrel. I think it was like 135 millimeters. And so, for example, let's say this was the um, Wii Tech 1911 standard size pistol. The inner barrel length was twice as long because it was designed to have a mock suppressor go over it. So, at first, my TM MEU shot like 310 because it was a TM. Then I put that inner barrel in there in a mock suppressor and later put it in like uh, one of those AA, um, AAB 1911 kits. And it shot 400 FPS. <gasps> <laughs> and it was so accurate that I took it to fields and it'd be a pistol in this little carbine kit and I'd just be like whack whack so that was a lot of fun super ridiculous wow um, so I would recommend that as a Mad Bull 6.01 inner barrel um, that was pretty cool uh, the next question he had was oh this is from Aiden what are your thoughts on PTS no longer being backed by Magpul Greg 
<laughs> well, I don't know. If, I don't know if Spartan is still here, but uh, yeah. I mean, we can go into it. That's fine. Uh, do you want to go first? Or you want me to? I'll let you go first. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, the story behind PTS is, as far as I know, and if Greg is here, Spartan One One Seven TGW, feel free to correct us because you are with PTS. Um, the reason for their split is that some folks were taking the Magpul PTS products and using that on real firearms, which um, they were not meant to be used on. Magpul PTS products were meant to be used on airsoft products, and the thing is, like, they were not, um, I guess, created to withstand the same caliber or same temperature of heat that Magpul, original Magpul products were, were able to. So, like, you know, let's say you have a rail vertical grip that you use on a real firearm, it heats up, it might melt the PTS version. So... Magpul wanted to protect uh, the integrity of their product because they didn't want people to, they didn't want that to scare off folks from buying the real Magpul product. So they took, you know, they, they basically were doing, uh, uh, they were trying to make the company or help the company survive by separating themselves from PTS. Um, it is unfortunate because, you know, I own quite a few Magpul PTS products and they're awesome. They're great for airsoft. And, you know, this is more of a case of a few bad apples ruining it for the bunch. You know, folks that, you know, should have known better than to use a, a Magpul PTS product on a real firearm. It is a professional training system, but that's in the world of airsoft. So if you want to use, you know, Magpul products on a real firearm, use Magpul products. Um, so that, as far as I know, that is the reason for their split. Magpul is protecting their brand name. Uh, PTS, though, has ventured out into a wide variety of other products, um, and I'm happy to announce, or at least report, that they also have a line of Battle Comp flash hiders on there, uh, or that they're, they have come out with. I'm a huge fan of Battle Comp, and I'm really happy that PTS is working with them, and PTS also has a wide variety of other products like the RM4. Um, if you don't mind, let me just give a quick shout out. I uh, already did him. Uh, Airsoft Blaze, shout out, approved. And then go hard, ride hard, airsoft. Shout out, approved. Nice. What are your thoughts on the PTS Magpul split? Uh, we're actually out of time, so I'm we're gonna, out of time. Uh, Bob covered it really, really well. Um, so I think that's actually better than I could have personally said it. So I we have two questions that I promise we'd answer. I'm gonna say super quick. Thomas is asking, when will the Texas store be here? Uh, it's a work in progress. Don't have an ETA at the moment. Oh, the last question is from Tyler. Is saying, Hey Dan, I'm a beginner in this amazing sport and wanted to know, do you have any ideas of what a good beginner gun is? My price range is around. Around 170 to 220 dollars. I don't have a charger nor a battery. Um, if your price range is around there, I would say go with like a combat machine uh, because there's packages for the Raiders where you can get battery, charger, uh, gun, and magazine, and still have some extra spending money for face masks, which is mandatory, and maybe an ex extra accessory. If you can bump your budget up a little bit, get either a G4, uh, the G4A1 is 110 dollars, or that CQR package. Um, the gear package that Bob mentioned before is right under 220. It's like 215, and you get a gun and like seven magazines and tactical gear. The thing is, you still have to buy battery on charger on top of that. So I would say CQR, uh, G4, or the combat machine would definitely be within that budget. Um, I would agree with Daniel, but I would also humbly suggest I believe the King Arms Nylon M4 is pretty dope, yes. and that, that came out around the $150, $160 price range. Uh, before we end really quickly, Michael C., shot Shout out, approved. A Team Airsoft, shout out, approved. And then Samuel Morrison already approved your shout out, but shout out approved. You got two shout ah, outs, dude. Ah, ah, oh, sorry, keep going. Ah, ah, uh, POW, MIA, 101. Excellent name and shout out, approved. Let's see. What other ones? Uh, Covert Ops Airsoft, shout out, approved. Let's see. Anyone else that I'm missing? The Lie Insurgent, shout out, approved. I think that's going to be it. One oh, more. Ah, CMS Actual. Shout out. Approved. Is he actually CMS? I think so. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think so. Um, all right, well, that is going to do it for the live show today on May 6, 2014. Uh, once again, I'm Bobby X-Men Hildebrand. This is Daniel from Marketing. Uh, and this is going to be the end of our show. Bye-bye. See you guys next week. Bye.